Well, it's abundantly clear. I like playing PS Vita games. You like playing PS Vita games. So let's talk about what PS Vita games we're playing. I guess that was a halfway decent intro. But not really. Greetings fellow Vita fans, this is James with PS Vita at 2am. That guy that, uh, well, kinda likes the PS Vita I guess you could say. Just a little. Okay, okay, I'm unhealthably obsessed. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe. And make sure to leave me your thoughts and opinions, as well as what PS Vita games you're currently playing, down in the comment section below. Because that's exactly what we're talking about here today. PS Vita games that we're all playing for the month of January 2023. It may be a whole brand new year, but that certainly isn't going to stop us from continuing to support and play our favorite handheld. Oh, by the way, my New Year's resolution is to lose weight, which we all know isn't going to happen. And as for me personally, here are the games that I have been enjoying so far this month. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. First up, going in no particular order here, because quite frankly, how could you with a topic like this? Anywho, the game I'm playing, Touch My Katamari. And uh, uh, no, don't actually do that. It's just the name of the game. Yeah, for some reason, I just felt like going back to one of the true classics on the PS Vita. Because as you can see, this was a very early game in the handheld's history. Heck, you can tell just because it's more of a mainstream title. And it may shock some of you to hear that this game is still an exclusive on the platform. Yes, despite the fact that a whole decade has already passed, it's still only available on the Vita. Well, at least legally speaking anyway. So for those who are not familiar with the Katamari series, you basically play as some weird alien dude, at least I think they're aliens, that has to roll up a bunch of crap on the earth. But you never thought you'd hear a concept like that in a video game, but man, can it be so addicting. But what's the storyline in this game? Because, you know, Katamari's always about its storyline. Uh, I mean, right? That's code word for no. Well, one day, a boy asks his dad who is more awesome, the king of all cosmos or his principal. When the dad is trying to make up his mind, the mom says that both are equally as awesome. The king overhears the conversation. Distraught by this, he becomes an utter train wreck. So it's up to you to roll a bunch of crap until the credits roll. Oh, oh, riveting storyline here. For anyone who was only listening to the audio of this video, don't worry, I wasn't doing what you think I thought I was doing. Warning, the following segment contains innuendos that could be taken wrong, and probably will be. Now with any good Katamari game, you start off with your ball very small, and are only able to pick up minimal things such as paper clips, pennies, stuff like that. But as your ball becomes bigger and bigger, as you roll up more and more junk, you'll soon be able to pick up chairs, then tables, then other forms of furniture, then houses, then and skyscrapers. <laughs> There's really no limit to what you can pick up in this universe. And once you got your ball big enough, well then, you know, um, level complete. Now it may sound a bit redundant on the surface, but believe me, it actually does take the physics in mind when you're rolling up your ball and can be such an addictive game, and was pretty unique back in its time. And considering that this is still a PS Vita exclusive makes it all the more special. So I guess if you've always wanted to roll up a bunch of junk on the PS Vita, uh, well this is pretty much your only choice. But it's a great one! Now my only minor complaint with this one is that it takes the whole PS Vita concept in mind when they made it. And what I mean by that is that it uses the touch controls. You have to use them in order to manipulate your ball, there's a sexual innuendo there somewhere, in order to get through certain obstacles. And you guys all know how I feel when it comes to the more gimmicky aspects of gaming. I'm just not a fan. But other than that, it's a blast. So, rolling up a bunch of junk not enough entertainment for you? Well, how about shooting a bunch of junk in outer space? I'm sure that could be equally as entertaining, right? Doesn't have any balls, though. This is Rezogun. And the cool thing about this one is it comes from the same exact creators as Super Stardust and Dead Nation. So I would classify this as a bit of the underdog when compared to the other games. Let's give it some love. So with any kind of shmup like this one, you'd expect it to take place on a flat plane where, you know, you just gotta go from left to right and shoot everything in your path. Yeah, I love that! Oh, but not so with Rezogun. Aww. The way the level plays out is more of a cylinder-like shape, meaning that you can see enemies coming around the corner from a great distance before they're even really a threat to you just yet. Just like my non-existent ex-wives. Oops, did I say that out loud? Now in a game such as this, you would expect to be able to be able to shoot vertically as well as horizontally, right? But the dev said, eh-eh, that ain't happening in this one. 
because you are only allowed to shoot horizontally. And at that point, the message from the devs becomes clear. Pay more attention to where you're at on the screen. Are they actually trying to make me use my brain here? So what it all boils down to is it really becomes a thinking man shmup rather than something you can just mindlessly shoot stuff at. Yeah, no being Rambo in this game. And to be honest, I kind of like that about it. Well, yes, I am a big fan of mindless shooters, don't get me wrong here, I still like the fact that this requires a lot more strategy than you would first expect. Yes, those words actually came out of my mouth. As far as power-ups go, it's kind of your standard fare here. You can shoot, launch bombs, boost, you know, stuff you see in other shooting games. And if you're looking for an in-depth storyline, not really sure who would with a shmup, but if you are, uh, you're definitely not gonna find it here. This is a game that's more about getting a high score than any kind of involving storyline. Though you do have humans to rescue, so I guess if that kind of counts as an engrossing storyline, then yeah, it's there. The bosses on this can also range from ridiculously hard to ridiculously easy. It became quickly apparent to me that the developers of this game were more interested in the actual stage layout than they were with most of the bosses, and actually requiring me to use my brain. But compiled together with a kick butt soundtrack, and this is one I can highly recommend. So we are now leaving the unfriendly skies and are now headed towards a feudal Japan. Come to think of it, I don't even think that takes place in the same time frame. This is Samurai Warriors 4-2. And yeah, you guys know me, I absolutely love my beat-em-ups and hack and slash titles. Yeah, we're going back to more of that mindless stuff. So the Dynasty Warriors series slash Samurai Warriors series are always a series that I end up coming back to, seriously. And although I've never played the original Samurai Warriors 4, this entry in the series is actually pretty good. You have a whole slew of characters to play, like with any Dynasty Warriors. I haven't counted, but I'd say it easily is 30 plus characters. And each of them have their own storylines, where you play roughly around 3 to 5 of those characters in each of the storylines. And you can choose who you want to battle alongside with. And each of the Dynasties have their own storyline, though don't expect a whole lot when it comes to this concept. You know, I kind of see a running theme with this list that I'm presenting you here with today. Games with fun gameplay, but nothing really amazing in the storyline department. And this one is no exception. I swear I didn't plan it out that way. I mean, yeah, I suppose you got some sort of storylines to go with here, but it really boils down to stuff like, oh, one of the sisters is trying to find her brother, or oh, you gotta stop X, Y, or Z character from turning to the dark side. It's stuff like that. Not bad, but nothing amazing either. But a series such as this is all about kicking butt and chewing bubblegum. And trust me, we ran out of bubblegum a long time ago. Now, much like the other time titles that came before it, and after it, because quite frankly this franchise just doesn't end, you're essentially a one man or one woman army. Yup, it's you versus thousands and you're able to take them down pretty much all by yourself, as well as your allies, though they are a tad bit better than the mooks. Yeah, the enemies in this game are just fodder. Level up your character and you'll be able to do it with even more flair. Wash, rinse, and repeat, and yeah, that's pretty much what the game is. Now this one focuses a little bit more on morale, mind you. Meaning that there are certain territories in the game that once you enter, if there is high morale, then the goons in the area will have a ridiculous amount of attack power and defense. So it's up to you to defeat the samurai which are waving the flags to hold up the morale in order to bring down the morale, and yeah, you'll be able to, you know, just essentially take down all of these goons with ease. So I guess that sort of balances the game a little bit better, but not really. Oh, and for any collectors out there, you will be excited to know that there exists exists an Asian English release of this game that you will probably be not so excited to know costs a ridiculous amount of money. But yeah, I just thought I mentioned that. Don't get me wrong, the game is fun, just not worth that amount of money worth of fun. I don't even know if that was a sentence. And that'll just about cover all of the PS Vita games I am currently playing on the PS Vita for the month of January 2023. But guys, I would love to know, what games are you currently playing on your PS Vita? How are you ringing in the new year, even though New Year's has long passed? Still, I'd like to know, so please leave your comments down in the comments section provided uh, down there. And as always, fellow Vita fans, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. This video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous Patreon and YouTube membership supporters who help make this content possible. So a huge thank you goes out to Gutter Drums, Hemdall Imbert, Wendy K, David Ray, Hero Acer, Adam Sony, PS Vita S, 
Richard Cruz, Joseph Shavak, Jelly, H Hitter, Michael O'Connor, Phantom XRS, Saul Ramirez, Kyle Brooks, JR, Silica, Thomas Cromet, Adam Thury, Skullshur Tugel TCG, BMF, Claymer Merlarkey, BG Legends, Jared Hado, Kevin Enright, Heston Joseph, Crazy Cat, Rodrigo Vera, Chris Foxhound, Sabin Fire, Buzz Saiyan, Rizal Pliskin, 1488 Dental, Azumara, Nintendo Switch at 2am, Donut Valley, Ricardo Martinez, Cham Plow, Franz Hartle, Aridri, No Good, Lacerated 87, PSP Guru, Jamie, Hector Gonzalez, Kayonko, That Bro, Juan M. Hermosillo, Eric DeWitt, Tasha Monti, Mozgus, Matt Hargan, Randy Azadich, Samai241, Airkick72, Worthorga, Zekrito, Alan Iwazu, Shin Snake, Meshuga360, Matt Fox, Reiko Star, Neuro Rashi, Milk Sama, and Bushin Ryu Cat. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and gaining access to a number of perks, including having your name featured on the end credits of these videos, or if you wish to remain anonymous, that can be provided too, then make sure to check the links down in the description below. I have numerous ways for you to do this down there. Can't support in this manner? Don't worry about it. I also have some affiliate links from both Amazon and PlayAsia for anyone who is interested in purchasing something from them. Basically, the way it works is so long as you use one of those links to just access their website, then anything you purchase after Afterwards, a small commission will go to help support this content at no extra cost to you, the consumer. I also have channel merchandise available, and of course, as always, likes and shares can help equally as much. And you know, now that I reflect back on things, maybe instead of calling this video games that I'm currently playing in January 2023, I should have called it fun games with not so amazing storylines. <laughs> now that's anticlimactic for you. <laughs>